Beep, 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 beep. Blinka, what's the latest? Well, um, just a little bit of reminder. This is our newsletter. Uh, sign up for it. It is massive. Uh, we have the 8.2.0 beta 1 release. You can check out the notes. We have all the news that we put in. Um, special thanks to Anne, who's doing an amazing job. Uh, and Anne was on a podcast, so you can listen to an interview with Anne, the editor of the newsletter. Um, but since this came out uh, yesterday, uh, Raspberry Pi posted today something that I know a lot of folks are going to ask about. So I said, hey, Lee Data, how about we just talk about some Python on hardware uh, relating to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So as of today, today. what's new okay. with uh, Python on this particular bit of hardware and what can I do? Okay, so the Pico W is the RP2040 board from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's like about a year old-ish. And on board is that uh, Infineon, I guess it was it was Broadcom, then Cypress, now Infineon, CYW43439. And that's a combination Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Bluetooth low energy chip. So the thing under that tin on the Pico W. And it's the thing that, you know, it costs two dollars. It's you know baked into the cost. Um and Wi-Fi support was added, you know, fairly quickly-ish. Uh, to the SDK and to MicroPython, so you can do Wi-Fi. And we added Wi-Fi support as well to CircuitPython. Arduino also has uh, Wi-Fi support. And then the next side was people were like, well, you know, it can do Bluetooth Low Energy. We want Bluetooth Low Energy support. Uh, so there is um, the ability now to do Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy, so Bluetooth Classic and BLE. Uh, I guess you can do both at the same time. You can do them individually. Bluetooth Classic is kind of best for keyboards. Um, and SPP, uh, those are like the two things people use it for the most. Uh, Bluetooth Low Energy is used for kind of everything else, modern style, and for interfacing with um, apps. Uh, in this case, they're using the um, Punch Through Light Blue app, which uh, totally is a blast from the past. Um, oh, yeah. Remember Punch Through Design? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was like six, seven years Whoa. ago. I guess their app is still available. You yeah. can also probably use it with Bluefruit Connect. Yeah. Uh, but... which is our app. And also. And there's an update free. since we uh, went live. The Bluetooth support is merged upstream into the official MicroPython repo. Yes. As well. I think it was in a fork, and now it's... It was in the SDK, like a few months ago, they released it was in the SDK. And then uh, now it's been merged into MicroPython. So from within MicroPython, you can make, uh, you know, Bluetooth keyboards, uh, wireless keyboard support. Uh, HID support isn't in there, so you'd have only Bluetooth, uh, low energy Bluetooth classic. But, you know, maybe for some people, they just want wireless. So the next question is, uh, Mr. Lady Ada. Well, everyone's going to ask when it's going to be added to CircuitPython. Yeah, that's what I mean. The answer is, I don't know. Uh, the answer is, we have to take a look at it. Um, we already have Bluetooth support and CircuitPython. And so what we want to do is figure out, can we make it um, compatible with our existing API? Because that would be ideal, because again, we have existing VLE support. And we've also been kind of dancing the idea of adding uh, Bluetooth support, classic or BLE through the ESP32. And um, we're not, again, it's like we kind of want to figure, ideally figure out a way to support everything and with the same API and, and without a lot of complexity. And it's it's, it's not trivial because CircuitPython has a couple of weirdnesses. Like we like to be able to dynamically add um, descriptors to the, the BLE um, peripheral dis you know, descriptor, like what uh, services are available. And it's not clear whether this stack, uh, I think it's called a like Blue Kitchen or the uh, yeah, SP32 has it's, it. It's uh, the BT stack library from Blue Kitchen. And it's also, it's not open, it's commercial use only, so it's like if we use it, sorry, it's you. It's licensed for commercial use with the RP2040, which is fine, um, but we would still want to have it again work with our existing API. Yeah. The answer is, I don't know. Wi-Fi is a little easier because Wi-Fi is kind of like, you can, you know, you scan, you connect, you open a socket, you close a socket. Like it's, 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 there's not a lot of um, weird things about TCP IP over Wi-Fi, whereas, or UDP over Wi-Fi, whereas BLE, everyone kind of has a, their own little idea of how to implement the API. So the answer is we don't know. We haven't really looked at it. Um, something we might be looking at in the next couple of months, but there's no ETA. So if you need it for your project, go with my Yeah, Python. well, you can just drop the EF2 on it. Now use it for that. And then when you need to do something Swap else. back and forth. I like to 
fact that microcontrollers are starting to turn into like little computers where it's like, I want to run this operating system on on this because this is what I want to do. Like toss Linux on this machine because I want to do this. Yeah. Oh, wow, I want to do something else, toss Windows on it. Oh, I want to do something else, toss a different operating system or a different flavor of Linux, for instance. So yeah. I kind of like that you can bounce between these and it's a non-destructive um, way to do it. You don't have to like kill your microcontroller. You can just drop a new UF2 on it. Yeah. You, you're fine you can you can you can have multiple ways to do something yeah anyways um so that's kind of neat so that was our um kind of python on hardware news that i wanted to get out because it just happened folks are going to ask us and so i'm like oh, link to this. i can just say here you go here you go and that uh is our python on hardware news this week don't forget um stay current with anything with circuit python we deliver this to your mailbox every single week go and find it on adafruitdaily.com we do not do anything with your email address. We decided to have a completely separate website. That way, you know for sure if you buy something nativefruit.com, we're never going to contact you unless it has something to do with your order. And then Adafruit Daily is a completely separate site. And uh, we just don't, we don't like spam probably more than you don't. 